So does fermentation temperature and control even matter? If you don't have fermentation temperature control, can you still brew great beers like Belgian beers? Well, I'm going to put that to the test today by brewing a Belgian triple inspired by Victory Golden Monkey. So stick around and let's get brewing. Well, thanks for dropping in. My name is Brent from Cascades Homebrew. My passion is homebrew and I've been doing it for over 25 years. The goal of my channel is to share information on brewing great beer using modest equipment following simple processes. Well, if that sounds interesting and you want to learn more about homebrewing, well, be sure to subscribe. Do you have fermentation temperature control? If not, what kind of styles, yeast, and techniques have worked for you? Well, let me know down in the comments. All right, so let's get into the brew day footage. So to start this brew day off, I, what? I didn't film this brew day, but I do the same thing. Can I just show that? Yeah, you're right. So I guess I just have to walk you through this one. So my girlfriend brews beer as well. She brews two gallon batches on her stove top, brew in a bag, very similar to my two and a half gallon brew in the bag process. She lives in a second story condo and she doesn't have fermentation temperature control. So it can get a little warm during the summer. She was concerned she wouldn't be able to brew a beer this summer during the weather. Well, if you look on the internet, people will tell you if you don't have temperature control, either brew Kvikes or brew Belgian. Is that true? I don't quite know, but she wanted to brew a triple, I wanted to brew a triple, and I do have fermentation temperature control. So I had July 5th off work for the 4th of July holiday, so she came over and we brewed a five gallon batch of a Belgian triple. She was the mastermind of the recipe and she selected one that was a golden monkey clone. So I think it was an homage recipe that was created by Danny Kong years ago and a couple other people have brewed it. I will go over the fermentation schedule in more detail, but essentially I split the batch into two fermenters. One of them was placed at room temperature in a bathroom. This is reasonably cool. The other was placed in my temperature controlled chamber where I followed a schedule that was similar to one that was in brewing classic styles. So I don't want to spend too much time on the recipe, but let's just take a quick look. So this batch was a golden monkey clone so it's a Belgian triple. It was brewed on July 5th and then packaged, I think it was almost four weeks later. So the original gravity on this batch was calculated to be 1078 with a final gravity of 1012. That would give it an ABV of 8.8% with 84% attenuation. Later I'll cycle back to the actual values for these batches since they were split with two different yeasts. The grain bill for this one is about 82% of a Belgian Pilsner, about 3% flake barley, about 2.5% of aromatic malt, uh, almost 2% of a biscuit malt, and then about 10% of cane sugar. Yeah, I'm not quite sure that flake barley is something that I would add to this style, but it was in there so we used it. The hopping schedule for this one was pretty simple. We used Magnum at 60 minutes to give it about 25 IBUs, and then with the last 10 minutes of the boil, we added in about a third of an ounce or 8.5 grams of saws hops, just to give a little flavor. And then additions into the boil, again, the cane sugar was added the final 10 minutes. And then also about half an ounce of ground coriander. We debated about whether adding any or not, but we decided to give it a try. Uh, half of a Warflock tablet, and then also some yeast nutrient. The yeast for this batch was Mangrove Jack M31, which is their triple yeast. I've never used this yeast before, so I was interested to try it, and I've been wanting to use dry yeast more often. We direct pitched one pack into each of the two and a half gallon fermenters. I'll go ahead and put the water profile up on the screen. Again, I'm not quite sure what I want in a Belgian style beer, and I didn't really see a lot of information about water profiles for this style, other than a little bit in the book, the water book. I'm really just trying to bump up the sulfate a little. I do think this is a style that should be fairly dry. So I'm starting with my Northern Virginia tap water. And so to hit that water profile, I need to add a little gypsum and some phosphoric acid. I always add some Campton tablet just to make sure I'm getting rid of chlorine and chloramine. This batch mash for one hour at 150 degrees Fahrenheit or 65 and a half degrees Celsius. And then it boiled for 60 minutes. Let's look a little closer exactly at the fermentation for this one. So again, so I said I took the five gallon batch and split that into two, two and a half gallon fermenters. So one of those, which I'll call the room temperature one, was just placed in a bathroom where the temperature is fairly stable. Somewhere around 72, 73 degrees Fahrenheit. I don't have exact temperatures for every day, so the jagged line is just to show that there was a little bit of variation in that batch. Note, I'm measuring the ambient temperature. 
I don't have exact temperature measurements of the wort itself. I have one of those strips on the outside of the fermenter and it was definitely reading in the 78 to 80 degrees Fahrenheit range. So it was getting pretty warm. I don't have a great way of measuring the temperature of the wort inside the fermenter, but that would have been an interesting stat to gather. Note that both of the batches were chilled down to 64 degrees Fahrenheit when I pitched the yeast. So with the controlled temperature one, I increased the temperature one degrees Fahrenheit each day for about a week. Now toward the end, I moved it from my temperature control chamber to another one. I didn't quite have the control set up right, so it went up a couple degrees more than I had planned, but it should be fine. That's shown by that little bit of a blip there. Then after that, they both just kind of sat for again, this was 27 days before we bottled them. And now let's look a little closer at the exact numbers for these batches. So it was calculated that 1078 and ended up with a 1075. So it's very close to the projected original gravity. Final gravities projected 1012. So the controlled temperature one finished at 10007, which gave it a 9.1% ABV and a 90% attenuation. The one that sat at ambient temperature finished at 1010, which gave it an 8.7 ABV and an 86% attenuation. I thought it was kind of interesting that the one that was kept cooler actually finished a little bit lower. If I had to speculate, it's just that the yeast got extra warm and then as it cooled when it slowed down, the yeast probably dropped and stopped working. So in general, I found with Belgian yeast that they really don't like to be chilled down. So you really want to keep the wort above the temperature that the yeast got itself to. So I think that's why the ambient temperature one didn't get down to the same final gravity as the temperature controlled batch. All right, well that's enough talking about the beer. Let me go ahead and get some beers. And while I do that, if you're getting some value out of this video, make sure you hit that like button. Thanks. All right, I'm back. Did you hit that like button? Before I open these beers, I want to quick touch on some fermentation characteristics. So essentially, as you might expect, the one that was fermented a little warmer at room temperature, fermented, started fermenting a little faster and a little more vigorous but they were both actually fairly similar. Since we pitched a whole pack into each fermenter, by the second morning, they were both fermenting pretty well. By day three, the one at room temperature was showing signs of slowing down, while the one that was temperature controlled took another day or two before the croissant fell through. I often bottle my beers at two weeks, and these ones were probably ready about that time, but just trying to get up a schedule when my girlfriend can come over and help me bottle. And I think a little extra time definitely is gonna hurt because it's a pretty big beer. So you might notice I have three beers here. One of them is the ambient temperature, room temperature one. One is the temperature control batch. And since this was a Victory Golden Monkey clone, I went ahead and got a Victory Golden Monkey. So I'm gonna go ahead and open these and then I'm gonna do some taste tests. So what I've got here is three glasses. Each of them are marked on the bottom. So I'm not gonna go full brewlosophy with the opaque glasses and triangle tests. But I'm going to mix them up and see if I can identify which is which. So I'll go ahead and take some notes as I drink them and then come back when they're ready. All right, so I'm back. So I tried all the beers and took down some notes. I mean, one I would say, you know, visually, there was a significant difference between the uh, Golden Monkey, the other one. So I didn't, and I didn't think I would have a trouble identifying the Golden Monkey. Golden Monkey, um, it's it's one thing I've found. You know, tasting homebrew next to commercial beer, um, it's a great way to sort of pick out subtle differences. So it's easy to drink a homebrew and go, eh, you know, it, it seems like a good beer. When you taste it next to a, a commercial beer that you uh, enjoy. Tasting Golden Monkey next to this one, <clears throat> I guess I never realized how much of a spice character there is in Golden Monkey. It definitely has quite a bit of, I'm not sure if it's a coriander, sort of uh, a spicy and then a little peppery character. It's a good beer. I used to think it was a little bit more plain, 
but now that it, I can taste it next to a different one, kind of pick out some of those characters. I think it's just maybe a little too spicy for me. But the notes on this one, so number one, which I know is the Golden Monkey, just it, it's quite different than these two. You know, it doesn't it doesn't have the the home brews, which are bottle condition, had much more head retention. They have a both of them have a really nice creamy head. The Golden Monkey does not have that. Right out of the bottle, uh, it didn't have the carbonation. It's got a spicy, sweet aroma. I thought the the spice and the pepper was maybe just a little bit strong, but. I could see where people would like that. And, and I actually like Golden Monkey. I think it's a pretty good beer. Yeast character, other than kind of that was peppery, I don't get, you know, is, is from additional spice additions or from the yeast, I'm not quite sure. And I thought maybe it's just a, a touch sweet, but it's a pretty big beer. Let's see, 9.5%. So it's, it's, you know, it's right in line with the with these beers. So I guess, I guess it's a little bit. So these are what, 8.7 and, and 9.1. Golden Monkey 9.5. So they're in the same range, but it's just a little bigger beer. These ones, I'm not sure which is which, you know. I guess they're, they are definitely pretty close. There, there's a difference. The general feedback of, of the recipe itself and the sort of commonalities. So this particular bottle had a little bit more carbonation head retention. I think that's probably just um, a side effect of, of that specific bottle. I thought the sort of the Belgian yeast character in both of these uh, was there, but not overpowering. This is my first time using the Mangrove Jack uh, M31. It'd be interesting to taste it side by side with a couple of different uh, similar, you know, yeast. I felt they all had uh, that kind of mild. Yeah, you know, it's it's I want it's not in a bad way. If I if I kind of portrayed that in a negative way, I think these ones have a really nice Belgian yeast character. It's just not it's not overpowering. I think the the homebrew version has a little bit more malt character to it. It might have a little bit, a little bit of the hop character may shine through a little bit more. It's hard to, it's hard to pick out the hop. But I'm getting a little bit of the spicy character that I think is probably coming from, you know, the saws hops. The homebrewed version has a, it's a little bit more body, a little thicker than the Golden Monkey. The Golden Monkey is, is a definitely a refreshing beer, and it's not, it's not significantly different. Uh, and I don't, I don't know if that's, um, you know, the flake barley. Again, that's, that's something I wouldn't add to a style. I think the challenge with this style is getting getting the grain bill up to get your original gravity and then get the attenuation down to give a nice clean crisp beer. So the differences between these two beers, I felt this one felt had, you know, I've, I've tasted these before in, in the past. I felt like I've, knowing which is which, I felt like I enjoyed the one that was temperature controlled. I felt that the the one that was at ambient temperature, which probably got up into you know, near 80 degrees Fahrenheit. I'm not sure what that is Celsius. I mean, I'll put it on the screen. But the, um, I felt like it had some this kind of like fusel alcohol -y kind of thing and some harshness to it. It's not, it's not apparent. There's definitely a difference between these two and it's not significantly. And that's why I ended up getting some water and cracker to kind of cleanse my palate. But I think this one feels like it's got a little bit more of a, that harsh character to it. Whereas this one, I think it is my preferred. So I'm gonna say, I'm gonna, this is the Golden Monkey. I'm gonna say this is the one that was fermented at, at ambient temperature. <clears throat> and this is the beer that was fermented at temperature control. So let me uh, take a look. So that's right, so I looked at this one. So this one is uh, the ambient temperature beer. So, I, and this one is the controlled temperature beer. So the, it, it's really interesting, they're, they're similar. This one just has a little kind of a, a and I say it's probably like a fusel alcohol-y kind of thing, a little bit of a harshness. The only friends, some home brewers that I shared this one, actually it seemed like most of them like the, uh, the ambient temperature one. Um, it, it's got a, like I said, I feel like it's got a, a harshness to it that may age out. But I feel like the temperature controlled one is just a smoother beer. It's got enough character, um, enough, enough Belgian character that I think it's a pretty good beer. What I would say, so what I, my strategy have generally, I've never used this yeast before. My strategy generally have been with, with say Belgian yeast, Trappet yeast, Saison yeast, <clears throat> pitch them in the high 70s. So pitch them around 78 degrees, let them free rise 
you know, potentially up in the you know, 75, 80 degrees Fahrenheit. So this particular yeast, I would not do that. So it'd be interesting to ferment it a little warmer than this one, which was in the you know, 64, 65, 66, 67 degrees you know, Fahrenheit. You know, keep it at say 78, 72 degrees Fahrenheit, but control the temperature and keep it from going um, into the, say 80 degrees where I think this one got. And one thing I don't know if I mentioned, the, the color on this beer, they're really, you may not be a good, I think with the, the different, different in the head, they may have looked a little darker, the homebrewed ones. They're really about identical. So I think the color is very good. As far as, is this a clone of um, Golden Monkey? No, it's not. Is it better than Golden Monkey? In some ways it is, some ways it isn't. I think it depends on what you're looking for. Golden Monkey definitely has a little bit more spicy. I think it's got a little bit lighter body. I think I would look to lower the body on this one. Whether that's you're know, getting rid of the flake barley, I think that, that doesn't belong in the, the style. I don't really have a good setup for step mashes. Uh, the 150 degrees Fahrenheit mash I think is, is probably about as good as I can do. It can go a little longer, you can do a longer mash. But other than that, I think it's a really good beer. You know, the yeast, I'd be interested to try out different different yeasts for triples to see uh, how exactly, you know, M31 ties, you know, how it competes with other traditional yeasts in this style. I guess the initial question I was trying to answer is, does fermentation temperature control matter? And can you just let, you know, Belgian beers go wild? And I think it depends. I, I think Saison's potentially can go I think you can let Saisons get a little warmer. I, I typically kind of let those go and I've had really nice clean beers. This particular beer, this particular yeast, I don't think you want to just let it go. Um, so I think you want to try to keep it during active fermentation below, let's say 70, 72, 74 degrees Fahrenheit, or at least keep it in those ranges. I mean, if you let it go, it just gets a little fusely. It'd be interesting to see this may age out well, so it may be in six months, this, uh, some of the off flavor, some of the fusel alcohols have died down. But I thought it was a really interesting experiment. Ended up with some good beers to drink. If you've stuck around this long, hey, thanks for sticking around. That must mean that you got some value from this video. So make sure to hit that thumbs up button. Um, hopefully you can take some of the things you've learned, get out there, do your own experiments, and let's get out there and let's build some great beer.